Let's see. Okay. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف وجعلنا من أعوانه وأنصاره اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الوهم وأكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزائن علومك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين Alhamdulillah, we have to fear to continue our study of the section on Salat from Jamu Sa'adat by the late Mullah Mahdi Naraqi. And right at the beginning, we ask Allah to send His Rahmah and Maghfara to the soul of both Mullah Mahdi Naraqi and his son Mullah Ahmad Naraqi. Rahmatullah and all our scholars. As you remember, the last session we talked about Haqiqatu Salah. And the author said, and the same thing is also mentioned in Miraj Sada, that Salat has seven elements. The reality of Salat, the soul of the Salat, the spirit of the Salat, not just the body and the physical side, not the actions. The actions, of course, we know from Fiqh, which parts are there, which conditions are there, we know. But the reality of Salat, as we said, the spirit of Salat, the soul the, which gives life to Salat, that is something more uh, hidden more underlying so we said there are seven elements very beautiful discussion uh, hardly maybe you find in other places they mention this so that here Mullah Mahdi Naraqi says these seven first starts with ikhlas ikhlas means that there is sincerity. So there must be first attention, intention, and sincere intention. If someone is sleeping, or if someone is, you know, uh, not rational, no, as far as someone is mad, for example, there's no attention, there's no intention. But suppose someone has good attention, clear intention, but not for the sake of Allah. So khulus is not there. So this was the first element. Number two, hudurul qalb, presence of heart, or iqbal ala salat bil qalb, as we have in some texts. That not only you have sincerity, but also your heart is present. Number three was tafahumu ma'an al-kalam. You understand what you are saying, and you mean what you are saying. If I am sincere, I have presence of heart, but I am thinking about something else as I gave example last week that for example I'm thinking about my sins and you know I am thinking about maghfara when I am talking about uh, something else no it when you are talking to someone in front of him you should be aware of what you say and mean what you say number four ta'zim to revere to respect to honor so this conversation this address should be with honoring Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, 
I have to say salamun alaikum to people who send salam on Facebook or here and I'm sorry if I cannot reply to your salam quickly or uh, maybe I miss please forgive number four is ta'zim that we already talked about it the other three I just mentioned quickly so that you prepare your mind number fifth is hayba when your respect for someone increases to the level that a kind of fear is produced it results in a kind of fear but not fear billah, from something which is fear you know frightening and if, you know something that is negatively uh, you know feared from no a kind of fear which comes with understanding greatness of someone or greatness of something when you are standing in front of a great man you automatically feel very humbled and you are overwhelmed sometimes with the greatness of that person and imagine if that person now it's not even a great for example a scholar or mu'min it's Rasulullah how do you feel in front of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or Imam Zaman for example. How we should feel when we stand before Lord of Rasulullah. That Rasulullah himself when was standing before him, he was shaken and he was, you know, full of khashya. So one new element, the fifth element, is haybah, having awe towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, this is a kind of fear which is caused by ajlal, as the late Naragi says, al haybatu khawfun it's a kind of fear that its source is ajlal to glorify to honor Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala number six the sixth element is arraja hope and I very much like this that whenever you stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for salat you should also be hopeful I am not for example suppose I have a difficulty in life some illness some I don't know family issue job issue I stand before a great alim a pious alim but he cannot do anything for me I know already and I have tried him for example before he said I cannot do anything okay so I have attention to what I say I have respect I have you know uh, heba, uh, feeling heba, but I have no hope Allah is different whenever you stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it should be with hope it's amazing that the late Naragi doesn't mention hope and fear for fear he just mentioned oh but he especially stressed on hope Salat is for the people who have hope and are going now to talk to the someone in whom they have hope as we say in dua abu hamza it's one you know sentence very brief sentence but full of meaning and i think 
when we say this to Allah with understanding and wholeheartedly it opens the treasures of mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Ya Rabbi inna lana fi karraja an azima my lord so you say ya rabbi so you feel very close to him my lord truly we have in you great hope as i said in uh, reflections on dua joshan last month of ramadan when you go to Karim to an honorable person and you say I have come to you with hope then Karim is not able to ignore you this is if if you may call it you may say this is a weakness in Karim although I think this is a strength but weakness in the sense that you can use it to get what you want it's a strength of course that if you say to Karim that I have come all the way to you with hope Karim who already wants to help people but when he hears that someone has come with hope says I should not disappoint and if you say to Karim Maha kadadhanno bik It would be very, very uh, difficult for Karim to take this and not do anything. So, Salat is the standpoint, is the position of the people who are coming with sincerity, with Hudur al Ghalb, with respect, with all last hope they have hope any problem that we have where is our hope in our salat we should look for an opportunity to say salat to Allah and mention to him our problems and mu'min is like A device for example suppose your computer your mobile you know is running out of charge you see sometimes you are working you're in the middle of the work and you know so much work you are doing with your computer or mobile and it's going to die any moment so you desperately look for a socket to plug in moment is like this with the difficulties of life mu'min looks for an opportunity to plug in and charge himself and that is salat and this is why rasulullah used to say arahna ya balal when the time of salat was approaching it was that the, ch the charge is finishing <laughs> we have to recharge ourselves comfort us means let us connect so this concept of hope is very important very very important and whenever you make dua whenever you go for salat in particular you should go with hope and as we have in our hadith about dua always think that your request is ready next to the door you must think that what you want is just there next to the door just get permission from God to go and collect it with hope so the late Naragi says La rayba fi zaidan amma there is no doubt that hope is additional to what we have said so far it's different from the first five things فَكَمْ مِنْ رَجُولٍ يُعَظِّمُ مَلِكًا مِنَ الْمُلُوكِ وَيَهَابُهُ وَيَخَافُ سَطْوَتَهُ وَلَا يَرْجُوا بِرَّهُ وَإِحْسَانَهُ There can be 
many people who respect a king, Malik. Malak means angel, but Malak means king. They respect a king, one of the kings. And has Heba fears the power and authority of that king, but doesn't have hope in kindness of that king. This is not our position when we go for Salat. That we just have respect and we just have you know fear and Heba, but no hope. No, it's not. Allah Abdu. ينبغي أن يكون راضيا بصلاته ثباب الله عبد a servant with his prayer salat should have hope in reward of Allah of course reward of Allah is a general term it can be reward of something from heaven something from dunya or nearness to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spiritual gifts it can be solution of the problems etc kama annahu khaifun bi taqsirihi iqabah of course he is also fearful about punishment because of his guilt that is also possible but the emphasis on hope here is more than fear. And number five, finally, Al Haya. When we stand before Allah for Salat, we have to have also Haya, a kind of positive shame. person who feels morally very conscious has very strong moral consciousness moral responsibility is very high in him or her and therefore even before anyone talks to him he knows of his problems or she knows of her problems and is mindful of them therefore when he's standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mindful of shortcomings الحياء الصابع الحياء ومستنده استشعار تقصير وتوهم ذنب مستند يعني what this حياء relies on what this حياء originates from is your understanding of your guilt and your thinking about your sin this is additional to number four five and six because someone can have ta'zim respect khawf fear raja hope but hayano he doesn't may not feel that he has been guilty he has not done enough min these three can be conceived without haya when when there is no thinking of guilt and committing sin i go to someone who is very for example spiritual very much great i have owe towards him i have respect i have hope even maybe he can solve my problems but I don't feel that I have done something wrong to him to feel you know, embarrassed in front of him. But with Allah is different. And this haya always makes you very humble, makes you very careful, doesn't let you to become arrogant and careless. So, Hariratu Salat is made with these seven elements. Now, in the next chapter, we want to expand on Hudurul Qal because Ikhlas already is discussed by the late Naragi before. 
and suppose everyone is more or less aware of ikhlas and there is sincerity we want to improve the rest so we understand this for salat inshallah we are sincere we are not <laughs> going to show off etc we have other problems our problem is more hudur al qalb and other things therefore we have now a chapter alaykum assalam wa rahmatullah on facebook i'lam faslun hudur al qalb i'lam anna kawn al umur al madhkura ruh al salah wa haqiqatuh these seven things that we said these are spirit of salat the reality of salat wal maqsud al asli minha and these are the real purpose of salat and then he says i'lam anna kawn al amr al umur al madhkurat ruh as salat wa haqiqataha wal maqsud al asli minha amrun zahirun then he makes an extra point not only these are a spirit of salat and the reality of salat and the purpose of salat he says even this is something obvious no one should have doubt you should not think that there is any doubt in this reality that these are the purpose these are what we have to achieve why this is maybe for you obvious maybe you don't need but let's listen to this great alim and he very well explains that why the purpose for salat is hudur al qalb so that it becomes crystal clear that if you do salat even with all the fiqhi conditions which of course must be observed but if you don't have if i don't have hudur al qalb this is not salat he makes it very clear he says the purpose of salat and ibadat worships in general is what in al gharad al asli min al ibadat wa ta'at hiya tasfiyat al nafs wa tasqilha purification and polishing of the soul one word if if someone says tell me in one word put everything in one word or if there are few things choose one of them this great alim and faqih and philosopher and uh, you know mystic he says if we want to say one reason for salat one purpose it is tasfiyat nafs purification of the soul wa tasqil polishing to refine to purify to polish your nafs then he says fa kullu amalin yakunu ashadd ta'siran fihi ma yakunu afdal any action that can help better with purification of the soul is better any action that helps you more with this task is more privileged now question is it just the fact that i make wuzu and stand facing qibla making my nafs pure or i say you know allahu akbar bismillah arrahman arrahim alhamdulillah does these important words by themselves purify me if so why many people tens of years have said these words and they were not purified why i have not been purified you can talk about yourself you don't need to go far away 
why we have not had mi'raj if salat is mi'raj why we still do bad things is salat tanha and al fahsha wal munkar so it shows that that purification of the soul is not achieved by the physics of salat by recitation and ruku and sujood only they are very important but they are to help us get to the soul to the spirit like if you have an embryo that there is body but not soul no life is dead you cannot say eye is not important heart is not important kidneys not. no they are important but they are all needed so that if we have life we use them but if we don't have life they cannot help us so he says kullu amalin yakunu any action that can be more effective, more influential in purification and polishing of the soul would be afzal, would be better. ولا ريب في أن المقتضي للصفاء النفس وتجردها وتسقيلها عن الكدورات من الصلاة ليس إلا الأمور المذكورة. And what can lead? purification and polishing from impurities is not except those spiritual sides those seven things not just qira and qiyam and ruku and sujood laysa li nafs al harakat al zahirat kathir madkhaliyat fiha just having those motions, those harakat, harakat of tongue, harakat of body, they don't have that much madkhali. I mean, means they don't bear on that much. They don't have that much, you know, big role. They are important, but not a big role. Just they are to serve so that we have the ground ready. But the rest is the soul. وَكَيْفَ لَا يَكُونُ حُضُورُ الْقَلْبِ وَالْخُشُوْ رُوحَ الصَّلَاةِ وَلَا يَتَوَقَّفُ كَمَالُ الصَّلَاةِ عَلَيْهِ مَا أَنَّ الْمُسَلِّي فِي صَلَاتِهِ وَدُعَائِهِ مُنَاجٍ رَبْ How can presence of heart and khushu, the humility of the heart, would not be a spirit of salat? And how can perfection of salat would not depend on them? while we know that a person who is praying and is calling his Lord is whispering to him is munajan rabbah wala shakka anna al-kalam al-ghafla laysa bi munajat and there is no doubt that if I speak without presence of heart with ghafla, with heedlessness I cannot say I am whispering, I am doing munajat. How can I say I am munajat but I am thinking about something else? A speech means to express what is inside you, zamir. What is in you, in you, you express it. This is kalam. If I say something and I am not meaning what I say, this kalam is void. لا يتأتى الإعراب عما في الضمير إلا بحضور القلب. You cannot. It's not possible to express yourself without presence of heart. For example, فأي سؤال في قوله اهدنا الصراط المستقيم إذا كان القلب قافلا. Someone says اهدنا الصراط المستقيم, but his heart is heedless. What question he is talking about? What is he asking? Ehdena, guide us. He is heedless. He is not asking for guidance. Na'uzu billah, na'uzu billah is a kind of 
event uh, you know the lack of respect a kind of maybe now making mockery if I talk to someone <laughs> and that person knows that I don't know what I'm saying <laughs> it's you know do you think I am mad do you think you know I have no respect why you just say this thing without knowing what you say with, without understanding what you say you are about thinking about someone else when people talk to us we expect from them more attention than when they listen to us isn't it because someone who listens maybe forgets maybe he thinks about other things maybe he loses his attention maybe he's tired but someone who speaks we expect more and still even someone who listens we keep telling them are you listening are you with me <laughs> we want to make sure that they are listening they're understanding and if someone makes a habit of not listening then the other party becomes very sad but when it comes to talking then it would be very catastrophic if people know that you talk to them and you know you don't know what you are saying no one would take you seriously so what type of request is this when his heart is hitless ولا شك أيضا أن المقصود من القراءة والأذكار also the purpose the reason for recitation and these invocations recitation of Hamd and Surah and Adhkar for Ruku, Sujood, Takbirat the purpose is what? Athana to praise God والحمد Thana is normally when you praise with mentioning some blessings, some bounties what tadarru, what dua you are showing your humility before Allah, you are making dua. Wal mukhatabuhu wallah, the one that you are addressing is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Faida kana kalbul abd mahjuban anhu bi hijab al ghafla. If the heart of the servant is covered with the veil of ghafla. وَلَا يَرَاهُ وَلَا يُشَاهِدُ He is not seeing God. He is not feeling the presence of God. بَلْ كَانَ غَافِلًا عَنِ الْمُخَاطَبِ He is heedless about the one that he is talking to. وَيُحَرِّكُ لِسَانَهُ بِحُكْمِ الْعَادَةِ He just moves his tongue because of habit. It has become habitual. فَمَا أَبْعَدَ هَذَا عَنِ الْمَقْسُودَ بِالسَّلَامِ How far is this from what was the purpose? الَّتِي شُرَّعَتْ لِتَسْغِيلَ الْقَالْبِ What was the purpose of Salat? Salat is legislated for polishing the heart. وَتَجْدِيدَ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ To renew remembrance of Allah. وَرُسُوخَ عَقْدِ الْإِيمَانِ بِهَا and to make the tie of Iman very strong and established. So if you say in Qira'ah and you don't mean, that's a problem. What about Ruku and Sujood? Maybe you say Ruku, I am not uh, by bending itself saying something. Say, we say again the same thing. Raku should be an action with understanding. What is the meaning of this action? What is the meaning of sujood? Do you mean it that way or no? Both both Ruku and Sujood definitely are for the sake of Ta'adim to show our respect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa Ta'adim kayfa yachtami'u ma'al ghafla. How can Ta'adim be with heedlessness? I don't know why I have gone to Ruku. So this is not Ta'adim. Maybe sometimes people, you know, 
in front of others go to ruku to check their shoes for example whatever you know it's not because they are doing ta'zim no they were, they were not even thinking about who is here watching them or who is you know sitting next to them when we do ruku in front of Allah it should not be like this that I have a habit that at this time you know I go to ruku I have a habit that after ruku I go to sujood وَإِذَا خَرَجَ عَنْ كَوْنِهِ تَعْظِيمًا لَمْ يَبْقَ إِلَّا مُجَرَّدُ حَرَكَةِ الظَّحْرِ وَالرَّأْسِ If ruku and sujood have no ta'zim, they don't involve respecting Allah, they become only the motion of back or back and head. It's just bodily motion. Plus, it's not a big action that you can say, okay, because I'm doing something great, therefore I'm going to get some, you know, benefit from it. It's uh, going to, you know, look and so something simple. Yes, for example, uh, actions of Hajj, you spend, for example, I don't know, sometimes uh, one hour, two hours, uh, more or less, for example, to go from your tent in Mina to do Ramya Jamarat and then go back. Although even there, it must be with understanding. But at least we can say this person for the sake of Allah has, you know, done something. Several hours, you know, going, coming, you know. Or, you know, Tawaf, you know, is taking some time. But just Ruku and Sujood, something very simple. People who do exercise in the parks or gyms, you know, they do more of this, ten or <laughs> tens of times more. What gives value to ruku and sujood is not the physical motion. There is not that much difficulty in these actions so that we can say Allah is testing us with the actions. The actions by themselves also are big tests. Kamafi af'al al-hajj. For example, actions of hajj, there is some mashaqqa in them, some difficulty in them, so there is a test. al mal fi zakah You give money. Giving money by itself is difficult. Or imsaq al-nafs an al-shahawat fi sawm When you are fasting, your nafs wants drinking, eating certain things, you don't give to nafs what the nafs wants. Okay. So there is some mashaqqa, there is some at least a spiritual exercise, some efforts you are putting to. But just ruku and sujood is very simple. What gives value to them is if you do it with presence of heart and Understanding that you want to do ta'zim of Allah. فَكَيْفَ يُجْعَلُ مُجَرَّدُ هَذِهِ الْحَرَكَ مَعَ خِفَّتَهَا وَالسُّهُولَتَهَا عِمَادَ الدِّينَ How can this simple haraka in salat with its lightness, khafif, khifam, it's khafif, it's very light, it's not very difficult and heavy. وَالسُّهُولَتَهَا, it's very easy. How can this become pillar of faith? Did we think that this three, four rak'ah, which takes three minutes, four minutes, this is amududdin? That's the physics of it? No, the physics of it is very simple. People do much more than this for you know, their worldly uh, affairs. But when you put life into this, becomes important. Alf, كيف يحتمل مجرد هذا الحركة مع خفتها وسهولتها إمادة الدين? How can this, with all its lightness and ease, be pillar or الفاصل بين الكفر والإسلام? Something that makes distinction between a Muslim and non-Muslim. Yeah? 
because we have in hadith man taraka salata muta'amidan faqad kafara salat is the sign of islam but just this ruku and sujood just this action a physical action cannot be fasid cannot make distinction wa tuqaddamu ala sa'ir al-ibadat salat is raised over all other acts of worship even fasting you know 18 hours i don't know hajj all still salat is above all why because of these motions or in some cases you know maybe th uh, there would be some kind of punishment in fiqh for someone who doesn't say salat and then he says وَلَكَوْنِ الْحُضُورِ وَالْخُشُوعِ وَالْخَشْيَةِ عُمْدَةَ مَا يُقْصَدُ بِهِ مِنَ السَّلَاةِ تَذَاهَرَتِ الْآيَاتُ وَالْأَخْبَارُ عَلَى التَّرْغِيبِ عَلَيْهَا وَفَضِيلَتِهَا وَمَتْحِ أَحْلِهَا وَعَلَى ضَمِّ الْغَفْلَةِ وَالتَّفَكُّرِ فِي أُمُورِ الدُّنْيَا وَالْوَسَاوِسِ الْبَاطِلَةِ عِنْدَ الْإِشْتِغَالِ بِالسَّلَا because Salat is very important and this presence of heart and this humility is the main reason for Salat, the main thing that we want to achieve. We have many ayat and hadith, akhbar means rivayat, hadith, that encourages us for Salat, talks about fazila and merits of Salat, praises people who are ahlu Salat, the people of Salat, blame people who are heedless and think about worldly affairs and about you know hidden temptations when they are praying we have also many hadith that al anbiya al awsiya prophets their successors the great awliyaullah كانوا عند اشتغالهم في الصلاة في غاية الإقبال والخشوع والخوف. We have many hadiths about the way, for example, Prophet, Imams, great scholars, they were praying, and how much خشوع they had, how much إقبال presence of heart they had. And then he mentions some verses of the Quran and then some hadith as examples. Qala Allahu subhana A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim Al-ladheena hum fi salatihim khashi'oon In Surah Mu'minun verse 2 Allah praises a group of people that when they are praying they are saying their prayer, they have khushu. He doesn't say, Alladheena hum fi salatihim yagra'oona surat al-hamd Alladheena fi salatihim yarka'oon, yasjudoon Just simply bringing these actions are not enough. Alladheena hum fi salatihim khawshi'oon those have khushu in salat. We talked about khushu before last week. Or in Surah Taha number 14, wa aqim as salat al dhikri. Aqim as salat. Make salat able to stand. Make such a salat that can remain standing. Not that it collapses. Lidhikri, for my remembrance. So it means that Salat is for remembrance. Inna salata tanha anil fahshaw wal munkar wala dhikrullah akbar. The greatest aspect is dhikr. Surah A'raf, verse 205. Wala takun min al ghafilin. Don't be one of those who are heedless. In Salat especially, we have not to, we have to avoid being heedless. Surat Ma'un verses 4 and 5 فَبَيْلٌ لِلْمُسَلِّينَ 
Allah doesn't warn people who are committing sins. Allah is warning Musallin. Salat is very important. But people who say Salat with lack of attention and presence of heart, Allah is warning them. Those who are heedless about their Salat. So this shows that it's like a person, for example, is responsible to make something and is not making it properly. Suppose I have to make, for example, a book and just I make the cover of the book looks like a book but inside is blank is empty can I say I did my job no I need warning if you want to make this like this you are dismissed we don't want something which just looks like a book we need a real book Allah has blamed them that they are heedless about Salat, although they are saying they Salat. Not in the sense that they were heedless and they forgot to say Salat. They didn't say Salat. <laughs> no, he says, so they, they are saying Salat, not that they forgot to say Salat. They say Salat, but they don't know what they say. They don't have presence of heart. This ayah, you are familiar with this ayah. This ayah is about the people who are drunk. Surah Nisa, verse 43. لا تقرب حتى تعلموا ما تقولون. Don't get close to the salat. Means don't say salat. When you are drunk, till you know what you are saying. So someone who is drunk, because he doesn't know what he's saying, he doesn't mean what he's saying. Allah says, you must come out of this drunkness so that you understand what you are saying. Some people have said this sukara from sukr, and you know muskar is something that makes you drunk. They said this doesn't mean necessarily those who have uh, you know, for example, drunk uh, wine or khamr. It can be someone who has so much concerns for dunya and worldly affairs. Sukara min kathrat al ham. So much overwhelmed with the pressures and you know concerns for dunya that he is like sukara. Or from hubbu dunya. But. Allah man Naragi says, this is one opinion, but even if we say that the ayah is about people who have become drunk because of something like wine, etc. But the point here is applicable to the people who are like them in not understanding what they say. Because Allah says, the ill this is a uh, discussion about usul al fiqh you know in usul al fiqh we say al illatu mu'ammimatun wa mukhassasa if you know the cause the illa of ruling then you can expand and generalize or you can narrow down very famous example is this if doctor tells you la ta'kul al rumman la'annahu hamid don't eat pomegranate because it is sour. He mentions that because it is sour. So you understand that if something else is also sour, you should not eat. So illat can do ta'amim, means to extend to anything which is sour. This is not qiyas. If doctor had not said la'annahu hamid, and you said this looks like roman, so I should not eat because it looks like Roman. No, this is not what we are talking about. But 
doctor specifically said so if pomegranate is not hamid no problem if something else is hamid is sour there's a problem here it says la taqrabu salat wa antum sukara hatta ta'lamu ma taqulu so we understand the problem was that they don't understand what they say so any person who doesn't understand what he says and he's talking to Allah in Salat has problem, similar problem. So we should try to bring our attention to the Salat. He says, as illa, because illa of the hawk is explained. He says, there are many people who have not drunk khamr, but still they don't know what they are saying to Allah. Even maybe they know the meaning, but they don't mean it. Their mind is not here. They look like drunk people. After this, he starts with some hadith. So first he mentioned some examples from Quran, and then he has some beautiful hadith about Salat. I think we, inshallah, can continue next week, bi'ithnillah. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on this Juma to send his salutations to the soul of Mullah Mahdi al naraqi and also his son Mullah Ahmed al naraqi and all our scholars and all our great muhaddithin and narrators of hadith who have preserved for us these teachings. And we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us improve our actions and above all to improve our salat so that our salat instead of being a source of dishonor for us, something for which we would be blamed, they become inshallah uh, a source of credit for us, a source of honor for us, a source of Inshallah, praise from Allah for us, bi'ithnillah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen.